The ecosystem services framework uh, asks us to account for the ways in which we benefit from nature. And when you think about it, um, there's different ways we benefit. So people often categorize these different kinds of benefit into some, into some major groups. And I just want to talk about those a little bit. In a way, the most obvious one is, are the ones that we call provisioning services. So that means where, where ecosystems provide something directly to us. Ecosystems provide food, they provide water, but then they do even more surprising things like they provide, uh, there are plants that produce compounds that we use to make drugs, so pharmaceuticals. So that's a direct provisioning service. We have other services that where the provisioning is less direct, it's more about regulating an environment that is good to live in. So the best example of that would be um, carbon sequestration. So when trees grow, they bring carbon um, into, their, into their roots and into the wood. They keep carbon uh, in, the, in the living system, takes carbon out of the atmosphere, and that reduces the effects of uh, global warming. So we benefit by that because it gives us a slightly better climate to live in. That's a good example of a regulating ecosystem service. Another one would be, um, uh, especially for people that live by the coast, where you might be influenced by um, storm surges. If you have a, a, a sloping beach or a mangrove um, between you and the ocean, then that environment reduces the, um, the risk that floods will damage your home. So that, again, creates a better environment for people to live in. It's a regulating service. Um, a third one, and this is perhaps the most obvious of all, is the enjoyment that we derive from environments. So these are normally called cultural services, and we can think of it um, as just the actual recreational values. You know, we like to, we go to natural places to enjoy them, to ride bikes, to climb trees, to do whatever you like to do to enjoy nature. Uh, for some people, it's a spiritual connection. Uh, it, nature is core to the, the, the philosophies of lots of people around the world, lots of the spiritual philosophies. And then there can be um, other forms of cultural connection through art and through literature and so on. So that's a, a, a third category. And then the fourth category are the ecosystem services that support all those other three categories. So the, an example of a supporting ecosystem service would be um, the process of soil formation and the cycling of nutrients in soil. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you and I don't think much about <laughs> what the soil's doing. We don't use soil in a direct way. But of course, if that wasn't all happening, then we couldn't be growing the crops and growing the trees and doing all the other things that, that benefit from soil. Another one would be the recycling of waste. So uh, for example, flies. We think of flies sometimes as pesky things, but another thing they're doing is going out there and they're eating waste. They're eating animal waste uh, and turning it back into soil. So again, we don't think about that, but if that wasn't happening, we wouldn't have those other services being supported by natural systems. So one of the interesting things about the New York water story, the story I told was happening largely in the 90s, and I was actually living in the US in that period because I did my PhD studies there. But people who talk about it nowadays make the point that um, it's such a success that people barely know it's happening anymore, right? People would know, if you had to build that enormous water treatment plant in the city, it would be creating uh, problems for the, the people of the city. They'd be having to pay those taxes to support the plant. Uh, they'd have to live with the smell and the noise of a big industrial facility in the city. There would be that kind of impact on people's lives. But this better solution um, was such a happy solution that people are almost blissfully unaware that it's happening. Uh, and I can tell you that if you go to New York, um, it's actually got really good water to drink. Not all New Yorkers realise how lucky they are, but it's got really good water. Australians are also used to good water, so that's maybe you know uh, less surprising to us. But a lot of cities all around the world, do, especially really big cities, don't have great water to drink. So the water is fantastic. But then also, if you visit the Catskill Mountains now, there are, I mean, for, for an Australian, it's an amazing landscape of water and waterfalls and lakes and rivers. So, so it's actually a really beautiful environment. Uh, and it's actually quite a vibrant um, community that by design is not being heavily urbanised. So that's part of the secret is that they've said, you know, yes, we need places for people to live, but we also need landscapes that are not full of people, but they have enough nature to provide these ecosystem services. 
And even if people don't use the language of ecosystem services, most people actually appreciate those kinds of landscapes. So it's not a wilderness at all. It's, it's got people, it's got villages and roads and all that stuff. It's not free of people. People are part of the landscape, but it's a beautiful landscape that supports a local economy as well as the economy of New York City.